Okay. And we're live. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Fellowship Door YouTube channel and go to the website at fellowshipdoor.ca. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Doug. This is Rowan. Tonight we are reading from 1 Kings chapter 11. Welcome to a moment of joy. Sorry we're late. I was at music and Rowan didn't want to read a whole chapter. So, anyways, we're here now. 1 Kings, no, we're not in 1 Kings, we're in 2 Kings. 2 Kings comes so after... 2 Kings. Kings comes after 1 Kings and before 1 Chronicles. And we're reading chapter 11. When Athaliah, mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family. But Jehoshaphat, daughter of King Jeroboam, and sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah. So he was not killed. He remained hidden with his nurse in the temple of the Lord for six years, while Athaliah ruled the land. In the seventh year, Jehodiah sent for the commanders of the units of hundreds, the Carathites, and the guards that had brought and had them brought to him at the temple of the Lord. He made a covenant with them, put them under oath at the temple of the Lord. When he showed them the king's son, he commanded them saying, This is what you are to do. You who are in the three companies that are going on duty on the Sabbath, a third of you guarding the royal palace, a third of you at the sure gate, and a third at the gate behind the guard, who take turns tending the temple. And you who are in the other two companies that normally go off Sabbath duty, are to guide the temple for the king. Station yourselves around the king, each of you, with weapons in hand. Anyone who approaches your ranks is to be put to death. Stay close to the king wherever he goes. The commanders of the units of hundreds did just as Jehodiah the priest ordered. Each one of one took his men, those who were going on duty on the Sabbath and those who were going off duty. And they came to Jehoiada the priest. Then he gave the commanders the spears and the shields that belonged to King David that were in the temple of the Lord. The guards, with each of the weapon in hand, stationed themselves around the king near the altar of the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehudiah brought out the king's son and put a crown on him. He presented him with a copy of the covenant and proclaimed him king. They anointed him. And the people clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! When Athaliah heard the noise made by the guards and the people, she went to the people at the temple of the Lord. She looked, and there was the king standing by the pillar, as the custom was. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. But Athaliah tore her robes and called out, Treason! Treason! Jehudiah the priest ordered the commanders of units of hundreds who were in charge of the troops, bring her out between the ranks, and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said she must not be put to death in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her as she reached the place where the horses enter the palace grounds, and there she was put to death. Jehoiada then made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people, and all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and idols to pieces and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Then Jehoiada, the priest, posted guards at the temple of the Lord. He took with him the commanders of hundreds, the Carathites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and together 
they brought the king down from the temple of the Lord and went into the palace, entering by way of the gate of the guards. The king then took his place on the royal throne. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was calm, because Athaliah had been slain with the sword at the palace. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. Any questions? No. I wonder how much ruling a seven-year-old does. I mean, how much did I do? Yeah. I just kind of sat there. Yeah, so obviously... Like, if he had the right guys around him, it would have worked out really good. And I think it did to begin with, so, yeah. Like, if, like if you're a seven-year-old, you don't really have the whole thing of, like, I'm gonna, like, protect these people. Well, you got the minor, but I want uh, to do this and that and all yeah. that. so I think you, you're, Your brain's still going wild. You have, like, no clue what's going on half the time. Right, and his parents are dead. And... They were killed by his aunt. And all his brothers and sisters were killed by his aunt. And then That was his aunt? Yeah, and then the other people just killed his aunt. Like, there's some trauma there. But, you know, I think he... Well, we'll read on. Uh, he's got the right people around him right now. And that's a good thing. So, we'll see how it works out later. Okay, um... Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you give us. And we pray that we seek you. And we praise you, Lord. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Hopefully at 8.30. For another moment of joy. Took forever. Goodbye.